School with it! It's your boy Samad Savage and welcome back to Hip Hop Madness. Now some of you guys may know me as a rapper. Switch, switch, switch. The blow up and and it's dope up, cause broke up, I don't love I'm living to pick up my pros up, let's blow up, no hold ups I figured I'm killing you hoes, yup Some of you may know me as a singer with a little bit of auto-tune I got talent infestinated with the fat I too damn infatuated with the class See, I'm on a different path, I don't hate it when they ask and some of you guys might see me game on Twitch, but today I am here hosting videos on Hip Hop Madness. So make sure you stay tuned because we dropping videos every single week. Anyhow, without further ado, let's start the video. A lot of people I have that don't know I have one of the best A and R ears. Do you think Unforgettable came to me like that before it went out? You know what I'm saying? Like it, it was nothing like that when before it went out. It was a song that was uh, it didn't have no structure. I had to sit there like a scientist and put it together. You think you get here by mistake 20 years out of New York? The most <laughs> the most hated on, it was a rap on every corner. You don't, unless you have a real passion for what you love and you don't take no for an answer and you let them know this is a hit and you let the rest of the world decide it because you can't make nobody like a song. Stupid ass, he got more hits than Kendrick Lamar. Fool. The man said he got more hits than me and Kendrick. Bro, yo, Jack Anthony got more hits than Kendrick, and you ain't damn sure ain't got more hits or anthems than me. You smoke hard. Why you tripping? You on real dope. Some of that real big meets dope. From the legends such as Jay Z and Eminem to today's hottest rappers like Lil Baby and Roddy Rich. Every artist that's topped the charts or entered the top tier list has reached a point where they've either had to evolve and fine tune their sound or get out of the way. But if you had to ask a hip hop head to categorize or define the sound of the Moroccan born multi platinum selling French Montana, they'll be left scratching their head trying to figure out where his appeal lies. Or even worse, pinpoint what he brings to the table that no one else can. A hustler since the early days where he was peddling his Cocaine City DVD series around New York. Montana, once known as Young French, has made himself at home in hip hop's upper reaches like few have over the past decade. Boasting a joint venture with Rick Ross's MMG and Diddy's Bad Boy Records after a series of misadventures with Akon's Convict and SRC, 2012 onwards has seen French obtain a seat at the table alongside the genre's bosses, kingmakers, and pioneers. But despite French having three albums and 25 mixtapes to his name, his space in the game feels as though it came more through association than by his own merits. Infamously edited out of Diddy's Three Kings photo with Kendrick, Jay-Z, and Nas, this small slight from his own label head and the fact that no one went to bat for French feeds directly into one of the biggest issues with his career. One thing that's completely unavoidable when examining French's career is that, while he might be a household name, he's always played the role of the man next to, well, THE man. Now that he's moving in the company of icons such as Diddy, Drake, and Rick Ross, French playing the role of the sidekick would be more reasonable. But instead of it being a case of him appearing small when surrounded by icons, French has actually spent the whole of his career in the shadows of more prolific mentors. It seems like ever since he made the leap from battle rapper to the mixtape grind, French has been both aided and overshadowed by his relationship with his original mentor, Max B, also known as Bigger Veli, Bigger Boss, Don the Silver Surfer, Wavy Crockett, the Wave God. After being championed as an innovator by the late ASAP Yams, Max B has been given his flowers for the revolutionary sound that he created even as he was serving 12 years in prison, while French has been largely left out of the equation. And even interviewed from jail, Max made it clear his priority still lies in expanding the sound of hip hop. Whatever I put into this is what I get back. So if you if you kind of cut corners with this, shit, you ain't gonna get no love. Like I go hard. Like I be I'm dedicated to this. Shit. I'm I'm studying. I'm I'm in my mind. I'm in my craft. Like. But no matter how much fame he's attained, the idea of taking shortcuts to stack the deck in your favor is something that is undeniably applicable to French's outlook on the game. As when it came time for Max to begin paying his debt to society, it seems as if Montana quickly scrambled for a new wing to rest under. Soon enough, after netting a regional hit with Waka Flocka aided Chopper down, he found one in Diddy. When I met him, we just clicked ever since the first day. And everything else, was, the rest was history. Was that a turning point for you? Um, no, it's just, you know, I, you know, I always needed a big brother, you know, and um, I felt like I feel like he was he was somebody that went from a friend to a, you know to to a big brother to family. Mm -hmm. I feel like you're never old enough to always have a mentor, an idol, somebody that can show you the way. 
From that moment on, the idea that French's success is intertwined with his connections became set in stone, and it's something that he stared into across his debut album through the upcoming CB5. Created with features or remixes in mind rather than concepts or timelessness, French's focus on making a family has resulted in a cynical approach to hit making that feels as though it comes directly off the assembly line. Rather than being a passion project, here's what he told Billboard as he began to rise to fame. Everybody is one circle, he declared in 2011. Everybody's fans becomes each other's fans. Their fans are buying your records. That's how it works. You see DJ Khaled, Lil Wayne, Rick Ross, Nicki Minaj, Drake. Everybody's on everybody's music, and they're all together like a big crew. I'm trying to build it like a roster. That's how you win. Approaching hip-hop more like an investment than an art form, French's fixation on building connections has definitely paid off with 17 Billboard Hot 100 appearances and a number 3 album to his name with 2017's Jungle Rules. But once you delve deeper, it soon becomes clear that he has never charted single-handedly and has always roped in as many big names as he can. Never one to rock the boat, French sticks to the industry's code of conduct wherever possible crafting a situation where his success and failures over the past 10 years have all been brought out by his commitment to playing the game and following trends. And as a result, Montana has always been around, but it's not too often that he's the first name thrown out. Rather than this being a fan theory brought about by his lack of commitment to becoming more than a safe bet, French's inability or unwillingness to move the needle in any permanent way even stains the legacy of his biggest hit. Among the most noteworthy tracks of French's catalog due to his fusion with hip hop and dancehall, he and Sway Lee's Unforgettable was a worldwide smash that was inescapable across both car stereos and clubs. But when it came to who the producer wanted on the song, French was anything but a first choice. In fact, as producer One Mind revealed, he was an afterthought. The first we heard about French on it was when it leaked in, in November. We were like, yo, French is on it. <laughs> like, I see this message on, on my Twitter from Oliver, like OVO Oliver, and he's like, it's like, yo, this is like our last session for views, like, like send some more shit. if you guys have any last ideas, send through. Kind of like ducked off back to my, to my friend's house, kind of did a little session for like four hours, and that turned out to be the Unforgettable beat. And I sent it uh, back to Oliver, and he was like, yo, this is fire, like, hold on to it or whatever. Like, obviously, it didn't end up using it, but um, yeah, I think it worked out for the best. Now, despite the fact that it was never intended for them, all credits has to go to French and Sway Lee for seeing the potential where Drake didn't. Not to mention, to his credit, Montana did his utmost to ensure that it was a hit that he'd always wanted, even gambling his own money on it to make something undeniable or unforgettable. <laughs> you needed this record, bro. Yeah, that's my biggest record ever. Bigger than Pop That and all of them put together. Did you know you had it when you got it? <clears throat> yeah. I knew I had it. The reason why I liked the record, why nobody thought it was going to be that big, because they didn't have that ear. Unforgettable would have never been that big if any of them artists would have kept it. Right. Right. Because of what I did to it, I built a life around it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I went to Uganda. It was so much to clear the record. I heard. I had to pay like 300000 out, out of my it. own pocket. That's mm -hmm. crazy. Not the label. Out of my own pocket, I had to pay 300000 That's happening. In typical French fashion, the major milestone in his career wasn't achieved single-handedly. Yet again, it was built from his close network of fellow artists given to Jeremiah, who then played it for French before he then snapped it up. This collab-heavy formula has been key to the rollout of both French's success and misfires. As we know, French's whole rollout is built on working with other artists, and as an interview with Paper revealed, maintaining his relationship with his fellow artists has become so pivotal to keeping his stock high that he renounces the idea of working in isolation entirely. But as his attempt to undermine J. Cole played out, it became clear that his words were less about the Carolinians' approach and more about his own awareness that he's relied on others to help fuel his own fame. Who sits there thinking about weird like going platinum with no features? Those people who put out albums by themselves are weirdos. Music is about having fun. If I'm chilling with ASAP Rocky or chilling with Drake or The Weeknd and we record, and then I have to say, look here, bro, I'm thinking about dropping this album just by myself, artists will stop with you. Through his dismissal of Cole's solitary approach to albums, French revealed that when given the choice between making something for him or possibly jeopardizing his profitable friendships with other artists, He's always going to pick the latter, but while Cole and his abilities to succeed off his own back bothered him a little, no rapper's acclaim in comparison to French's has constantly led French to open his mouth only to be shot back down like Kendrick Lamar. And oh man, last year, 
He incited a worldwide debate when he maintained that he had more hits than the Compton rapper with an argument that focused on club smashes and chart positions rather than K-Dot's bread and butter of making timeless music. All along while showing off that trademark self-belief that's led him to success in ways that others who were perhaps more naturally gifted have never had the chance to. I feel like I got more hits and I wouldn't and I wouldn't have said nothing like that unless I, unless I did my homework before I said something like that. I never said I was a better artist than Kendrick. I never said nothing. We were just talking songs. People just went out of line with it. I made it out of Africa. Then I came to the Mecca of hip hop in New York and made it out of New York as one of the top artists from New York till, till now. If I didn't have this attitude, I would have never made it nowhere. Like, I believe I'm this I'm not saying I'm better than him. I'm just saying as far as like songs and anthems, I could go neck to neck with him. Clowned by everybody from Young Thug to the Reddit community for his comments, it was telling that Kendrick didn't even respond to French's claims that they could stand toe to toe. But what makes it even worse is this isn't even the first time he's allowed his envy over how Kendrick is seen to bubble up to the surface, only simply to be completely ignored. In a lengthy tirade on a 2016 appearance on The Breakfast Club, French Montana, the walking embodiment of industry and hip hop, presented a conspiracy theory in regards to how K-Dot is celebrated for his achievement. It's not that it's not the right thing to do, but I just feel like they, you see it's like the whole thing was like Kendrick Knight. That album don't sound like nothing that's out. The whole hip, like I, you know what I'm saying, the whole hip hop game don't sound like that. Yeah. They put him on that platform so they could shift music towards that direction. Would you ever make a conscious record? I mean, you definitely want to grow outside of, of, of you know, your own your own comfort zone sometimes to see what you're capable of. But I would ne I'm, like, I, I never jump somewhere where I can't come back from. Simultaneously frustrated at his lack of esteem but unwilling to strive for anything more than hits, French's anger and the idea that he's managed to be both successful yet irrelevant ultimately boils down to the same thing. As while he's been in the orbit of innovators and new waves, he's ultimately never pushed anything forward. Instead, he's just kind of been there. If only he was unforgettable. <laughs> Incapable of creating his own momentum and left to rely on strengths of his features, only time will tell if French's relevance will temporarily spike again courtesy of a mega hit or his glory days are gone. But when it comes down to his status as a hitmaker that feels dispensable, French's issues comes down to striving to be nothing more than a passable in a genre that, as far as the legendary status goes, will always remain to aim to reward the remarkable. This has been a Hip Hop Madness original. Make sure you stay tuned in and up to date by subscribing and banging the heck out of that bell. Oh, and don't forget to follow me, Samad Savage, on Instagram, Twitter. Look me up on Google and follow me on everything if you got some love for me. Peace and screw with it!